hi and welcome to my channel today we are going to be talking about come follow me for march and i'm so excited to have this done and to give it to you so that you guys can prep it for your your kids if you want to use it and if you are new to my channel i created this channel as a homeschooling resource to give you different ideas for curriculum like i'm doing today some different unboxings organizational ideas so if you are interested in those things please hit that subscribe button and let me tell you a little bit about march so I'm just gonna go through and just give you a few thoughts I had as I was making this. Hopefully it won't be too long. And then you can find everything to download this and some extra resources in my in the description box below will be my blog post. And so you can go to that to download this. This one is longer than the last few months have been because it covers five weeks instead of just four. And so it starts this next Monday. And so that was exciting that it was longer and not really, it just took a little bit more work for me. <laughs> so it's exciting that it is done. But the first page I wanted to mention, so as we start talking about Second Nephi, we're talking about different types of people and how Christ loves everyone. So this is a word search and it's talking about, some of the words are black, bond, ethnicity, female, Gentile, heathen. So these are different names that some of these word searches, it's easy for kids to just go through and find the words that, with very little explanation. But these ones you might wanna to talk to more about because they probably will not be as familiar with these types of words. So I just feel like giving a little bit extra background or lesson or talking to them about what these people are or who these people are would be helpful for them. And then the next thing that I thought would be fun, there's one on here that talks about the Book of Mormon being a gift from God. And so they have to read the clues and guess. Book of Mormon down here, that's a clue. If you didn't figure it out, that's what the answer is. <laughs> so if you wanted to have an actual present, like a Book of Mormon wrapped, and they could unwrap it when they were all done figuring it out and see if they're right, you could do that. I just think that would be a fun, like extra step you could do. And then this is a little something different. I haven't done this type of thing in the last two, but we read in the scriptures about God giving us here a little, there a little. That's how he teaches us is by these little steps. So I put that scripture on here and it covers two pages. Let me see if I can flip to it. So there's this one and this one. And it's meant to be cut out and then they can lay it out and look at it and practice memorizing it. You could even do it for the, the week or for the whole month, practice memorizing it. So lay it out so that they can they can see it, put it in the right order. The scripture is right here. So if they get out of order and you're not sure, you can look at the scripture and put them in the right order. And then after they read it once, take a couple away and then keep doing that until they have it memorized or at least are somewhat more familiar with it. So that's this principle of God teaches us a little bit by little bit. So he takes a little away or he gives us a little bit so that we can learn. So that's what the point of that supposed to be. So I'm really excited to do that with my kids. And then these are not new, obviously. I always put the scripture after every day so they can practice one for the week. But I just wanted to give a few other ideas. So you could do something like I just mentioned with the line upon line scripture where you, you print these out on little pieces of paper and they can take them away. You could also, if you have a whiteboard or a chalkboard, you could write the words up there and then have them erase one or two, depending on how long the scripture is, and then practice it again. And you could do that every day. If you just wanna make it a little bit more meaningful or have them actually remember it by the end of the week, then that might be something just extra you can do and it doesn't require much work on your part. You just write it down and erase it and the kids love erasing stuff. So that's really fun for them. So that's an idea, another one for that if you wanted to do. This is also a little bit different than stuff I've been doing in the past. This is talking about feasting on the scriptures. So this one, I copied a passage of scripture from second Nephi, and you're supposed to go through and highlight the words, God, Lord, and Christ in here. And this isn't something I expect the kids to be able to do on their own. So even though this is for about five to eight year old age range, most of my kids wouldn't be able to do this on my own. It might be slightly difficult for my oldest, but he could probably do it, but the other ones are gonna need my help. So this is something you can go through them with them together and work on it together. It's not just meant to be thrown at them and then do it by themselves, because they probably will not be able to do it unless they are really, really good readers. And then you can talk about the scriptures too. 
And so in here, there's also some stuff about the foolish men and the wise men and making sure we're building a strong foundation on Christ. So they're gonna draw two different pictures, what the foolish men would have looked like, what the wise men, but it would also be a great thing to just have stuff they could build with to see which foundations are stronger. So if you wanted to have some blocks, you could do that. You could have them try to build stuff with sand and see how strong it is. You could shake them, like put them on a table and shake them and see what happens, which one stands and which ones don't. Just to kind of give them this visual idea of how important a strong foundation is. I just feel like it would mean more and they'd understand it better about building a foundation on Christ. And then this one, there's a whole section in here that's talking about missionary work because we have Jacob 5 this month, which is talking about the allegory of the olive tree and gathering Israel. And so in here, this is something they've seen before. You just fill in the blanks to figure out some of the meanings from the allegory. But something else that's fun, since there's a few different sections on missionary work, is having your kids role play and be missionaries. We used to do this with our kids all the time. We need to do it more. It's been a while, but they loved knocking on our door, like on our front door, and we'd open it and they'd have a little speech to give to us. Like, hey, I'm a missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ, the Latter-day Saints. And maybe they'd say their name, like, hi, I'm Sister Paulson or Elder Paulson or whatever. I have a message about Jesus Christ to share with you. And so then we just talk to them and it just gets them a little bit more comfortable with missionary work and excited to be missionaries. So that's just a fun idea that you could do. And then I put this crossword, word search, crossword. No, yes, crossword. I get confused between the two. I kind of keep them straight. So I put this in here and this is talking about all these, the little books, because we go through Enos, Jerem, Omni, and Words of Mormon also this month. And so I, I like to have my kids be very familiar with what's going on in the scriptures. And I know they're still young, but just being more familiar with the names, who the people were, who their father was, their son, all these things. So that's why I put this in here. So they're probably gonna need a little bit more help figuring out who these are. They might be able to just count the spaces and kind of get it from that. But it talks about, you know, Coriantumr is mentioned in these scriptures, so, because he was the last of the Jaredites. We have Omni, the Mulekites. There's a lot of different names they probably aren't gonna be very familiar with and they're gonna need a little bit more help. So just pointing that out, this one probably needs a little bit more attention than some of the other ones I've done. And then the last page I wanted to talk about, this one is, it might seem slightly repetitive. There's one at the beginning of this packet that has them draw their favorite Book of Mormon story. And this one says, a, draw a picture of a scripture story you've learned from the Book of Mormon so far this year. So this, picture right here should just focus on where we are in the scriptures, tell words of Mormon and not the whole Book of Mormon. Where the other one, they can draw any picture they want because it's just talking about being grateful or why you love having the Book of Mormon and things like that. Where this one is focusing on, the only reason that we have these small plates is because Mormon listened to the Holy Ghost. So that's kind of the emphasis of this and what we want to focus on is that we have these small plates because when we listen to the Holy Ghost, we are blessed and we're given more. So they wouldn't have all these stories that they get to draw a picture of if it hadn't been for Mormon listening to the Holy Ghost. So that's kind of the focus on that one. So I just wanted to clarify so you don't think it's like super repetitive. It is slightly, but it has a different purpose. So that's the packet. And I'm just really excited for us all to get into it this month and be able to learn and grow with our kids together and learn more about Jesus Christ. So if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, please give me a thumbs up and comment below with anything concerns you have, questions, or if I typed up something wrong, please let me know and we will see you next time.